So now I'm going to cover the page setup options. So what that does is if you hold function and press page, it takes you to the sequence of page setup. And what you can do is you can extend the pattern and also change the length. So what I'm going to do just to showcase this is again, just use the basic boring sounds that come with the digitax. So let's try these. We'll set them off. We'll just do a really basic pattern. Right, so what it does is it allows us to extend the pattern. So if I hit this four times now, you can see we've got 64 out of 64. If you play it, you'll notice that it's extended it, but it's also auto copied and duplicated what we already had. And that is because in the settings in Personalize, we talked about this before, we've got page auto copy. So you can uncheck that. And then when you extend it, it will be blank as you go through the next three bars. But I like that on, it works really well for me. Once you've kind of like opened up the possibility of extending, then you can do some things like chuck in little fills like this on the kick maybe, or even the snare, you go to the last one and we might want to do like a cool little snare fill like this. And also before we move on, let me just mention speed as well. So you can change the sequence at speed, still the same length, but it's just slowed down. Or you can put it in 3, 2, or 3, 4, and speed it up as well. Let's just leave it on one for now. That's really useful when I show you this next function. So you can hold function and press yes. What that does is it changes it from a pattern length, so that's a global pattern length, to pair track length. So you'll notice the track changes as we go through. What we can do is each different track in this pattern can have different sequence of lengths by changing those, and it can also have different speeds. If we go to the snare length, you'll notice that it colors it in red to show you how many tricks we're using or the length of that. So at the minute it's out of 16. I could actually tell this to go six out of 16. Let's press play. And if we look at it, you can see, we'll come out of that, out of this as well, sorry. There we go. You can see it resets there. But it does this weird thing as well where it jumps back there. And that is because if we go in to this page, you'll notice that the reset is set to 16. If I set the reset to 64, what will happen is it will allow it to keep, keep going round until it gets to the fourth bar. Then it will reset to the one. So that's just continually going round like this and then it will reset at some point. There you go, it did a little reset on the free there. So there's that. it can be useful for that, for shortening stuff. It can also be useful if you want to extend something as well. So you can extend it with this or you can just press page like that, which is what I usually do if you want to duplicate it and lengthen it. Then if we go back into the snare, you can see we've got two bars now. On the second bar, let's do some funky fills like this. Let's extend it further. So I'm going to go four, but then on the fourth one, I'm going to go in there and do a bigger snare roll like this. And don't forget, you can go quite odd with it as well. So if you wanted to, you could do just 48. So it's just rotating round on three now. But it's reset there because we've only got a four bar reset. So you could go in there and change this reset now to 128, which will allow it to go across eight bars. And by the way, just to let you know as well, this reset can go all the way up to infinity, as Buzz Lightyear once said. Um, but it can go to 1024. That was such a bad dad joke, wasn't it? Um, so yeah, you can put it on infinity and it'll just never run out then. It'll just keep rotating around like this. Really good for when you want to get into um, polymeters and polyrhythms and that kind of stuff, which we'll cover later as well. So what I'm going to do is just put that on 64 for now. And I'm also going to put the length of the snare drum to the 64. So the other thing that we've got in here as well is pattern change, which is just there. 
Um, and what this does is it tells the pattern when to change. If it's off, then it will go by the reset. What I mean by that is 64 trigs will go, 64 steps, and then it will change like this. So if I come out of this and then press pattern one, so you can see pattern one's getting ready to jump over to. We'll go until the last bars played. So it's four bars. If we go back to this and press function and page, I can change that to maybe 32. So it won't do the full 64, it'll do 32. So if I press play again, change pattern. When it gets to the halfway point, it should change like so. There is one caveat to this though. You can't have a change that is higher than the reset currently because I've tried that and it doesn't work. It will just still change at 64 when it resets. This is very useful if you are wanting extended pattern lengths such as double 128, which would be 256. But you don't want to wait 256 steps to change the pattern. You want it set to 64. So what we can do now is press play. So we've got this like really nice long sequence now, which is double the eight bars. But it will always change at 64. And that will allow you to not have these like really annoying weights and so you can change pattern in a live setting. So it's really useful to use that. Um, and that is pretty much it. So speed becomes useful to me when I've got like a bass playing that's really long. I'll give you an example of this. What I'll do is I'll come out of this and I'll go to track eight. And then on track eight, let's choose a bass sound. I think I already had one in here somewhere. Uh, let me come back out. Let's just put a new one in actually. Let's go factory, tonal, bases. Let's go steady bases. Let's use the same one as before. So we've got this bass, and let's say if I want to do four notes, and I've just got a 16 bar at the moment. So let's just figure it out first. Go to the trig page, put a note C in. Let's go D sharp. Let's go D. Let's jump all the way down to G maybe. So the way that I would normally do that is I would open up the track length and I would copy each of those notes over. But what I can do is I can just do it all on one by changing the speed like this. Maybe like that. Where that becomes useful is, especially on the older Digitats when it only had four bars, if you've got a four bar length, those four notes will take up the four bar, but maybe you want to have, say, eight notes, then what you would do is you would just drop the speed down by half and then it would open up the sequencer. There is a caveat to it though. So when you are on one speed, you can chuck in little random notes like this, like little trills and fills and stuff. But as soon as you break it down, you're losing 16 the 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 like shortest note you can put in really is uh, an eighth but there is a, a workaround for that as well because you could just go in there and use the retrigs so you could say this one i want this to retrig and i want it to have a length of two i think oh, i might have to just keep that one but then i want the rate to be let me just double check this 16 there you go so we've got two notes there but then you can't change the, the note itself, you can't change this bit. So anyway, that's it for the sequence of page setup.